another day here at Usha Village. Headed over to do what I do here pretty much every morning for the past week. And that's to head over to the hot thermal sauna. And um, I love it. I love it. Waking up here every morning. First thing I do is get in that sauna. <clears throat> and it just really opens up all the channels. Pulls some of that extra mucus out of you that you have in the morning. And just relaxes your muscles from sleeping at night. And I'm able to just kind of get in there and stretch. Get in there and just do some deep breathing. And... Um, just kind of open up my pores and kind of get the, the day going. And I, I love this damn thing so much. I think I'm going to want to try to have one built <laughs> back home because it's so wonderful to uh, be able to do that every morning. And um, I love they put almost smells like lemongrass, but it's, um, I think, eucalyptus leaves that they put in this extremely hot water. I almost burnt my feet on this water the other day. So now I got my my tub shoes but um yeah i'm um the, the the eucalyptus or the lemongrass that you can smell as you're doing your breathing and opening up your pores it's just wonderful and i've noticed a lot of difference in just my skin <clears throat> since i've been doing this every day um and it's just wonderful so we're just now headed right coming out of the actual village where the huts are Just get that whole experience of just being still, healing. You know, you're staying over in this side of the village. You come up this way every day before you get to the big house and you do your your morning sauna. So that's what we're gonna do. Awesome. Oh yeah, that's off the chain. Oh. oh. All right, I'm gonna get some cold water over here. Refresh myself. I think it's very important that you do like a really cold rinse after you get out of this thing because you got it, all the toxins are coming out of your body, coming out of your pores. So just getting all that off you is important. Usually I'll go back in a couple more times, maybe three times, maybe four if I can take it, and then I'm off to the, the hot spring, the hot pool, thermal spring. Walking back toward the village, but further down the hill, there's actually, um, we're passing some thermal springs here. And that's coming like right out of the ground, it's amazing. You can smell the sulfur in the air as you're walking through here. It smells like eggs. But, but that's just um, the, the gases that are releasing from the sulfur water. We're gonna walk further past the village now and down into the sulfur bath. It's really warm. Twice a day here, we're told to just, you know, kind of let your body sit in that water. It's great for your skin. I mean, eczema, um, good for any skin issues, people who are suffering with um, arthritic problems, um, asthma, um, suffering with um, uh, arch um, arteriosclerosis. You can get into that water and start to feel the benefit. I actually was having some joint pains here, and I have not felt any of those joint pains maybe three days after bathing in this water. So that's been wonderful. So I'm going to take my morning dip now. I did 
want to make you like that. Trying to catch me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Trying to catch me, Gorm. Oh. <laughs> it must be big. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. warm in here but it feels good in the morning. I can't do it during the height of the day. It's just too too much heat. But in the morning or at night it's wonderful. And you're just surrounded by the mountain. You can see the whole jungle out here. It's absolutely beautiful. And there's a tamarind tree. Isn't that nice? You drink a lot of tamarind Yeah, I could I could drink tamarind tea every day. <laughs> it's really good. I actually mix it with some sour orange. There's a lot of sour oranges here. Oh my god, it's so delicious every day. It's um, tamarind juice, passion fruit, um, sea moss, which we're gonna see er um, a little later because I drink the sea moss every day, which is wonderful. I love it, and I learned that. Um, the sea moss I've been drinking back home is not the real deal. So today we're going to see the real sea moss. Um, and it's, it's wonderful. So we'll show you that later. <laughs> My name is Roger Hudson. And... Before I came here, my mother told me she lost her mind. She pretty much had a conniption when she found out Sabi didn't go to school and he's being called a doctor. She lost her mind because of that. But then she seen videos and she seen my progress. She heard me and it's the proof is in the pudding in the pudding because I wasn't talking like this before. I wasn't talking. When I first came here, I couldn't talk really. I couldn't conversate. I could talk, but I couldn't conversate. I couldn't conversate. I couldn't defend myself in an argument with a two-year-old, pretty much. But this place did it. This place did it. It's this water. This water. Yep, so come on, come on out here if you need help. This is the place. It's the place for, for us. This is the place for us. Yeah. Did you all right, do? all right. See you later. See, See you later. You later. All right. All right. I think I'm gonna head over and shower and get my self ready for some breakfast because I think it's about that time. You know, something that's really um, interesting here is the time is different. Your time is, you know, you you get, I think, recalibrated to natural time here, which is really amazing. Uh, you know, um, which is something that I understand. You go to bed with the moon and wake up with the sun and you're back in a natural time flow with nature, which is very important, I think, for wellness, for wellness of mind, spirit. Um, but yeah, notice here, naturally, five in the morning, sun's coming up around six, I'm up and everyone's up, everybody's up. And sure enough, seven o'clock, sun's going down everyone's ready for bed and it's just a natural flow everyone's ready for bed and then we all wake up together as the sun comes up so um, you rest very well here and um, maybe the first two days you're getting in rhythm but after that it's just a beautiful a beautiful uh, natural time rhythm here so it's, it's wonderful so it's about eight o'clock here is when they serve breakfast and um, I think we're going to head over there now.
So I'm headed over to my room now just to kind of get myself ready for a morning breakfast. And um, the crazy thing about this experience is that um, I was put into Lisa Lefty Lopez's old room, and I believe it was her last um, resting place before she made her transition. So um, just the whole time I've been here, it's been an interesting energy in the village, still kind of buzzes about her a bit and, and just sharing a lot of love, you know, just how beautiful she was and um, how she came for um, cleansing and healing, but that she actually was the healer and she ended up also healing Sabi. So um, it's just beautiful to um, be in her energy space and um, just share and all that love. So rest in peace, Lisa, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Room 11. <laughs> showered and changed and I'm gonna go head over and get some hot water because every morning um, after you do your sulfur bath um, they give you a kettle so that you can go and get fresh sulfur water right out of um, the spring over here and typically I'll fill this up usually part way and I'll just sip on it either throughout the day or um, I'll make tea with it and um, it's really really good to get the sulfur not only on your skin and bathe in it but it's really good to drink it as well here everybody drinks it's really good for inflammation um, skin conditions um, asthma bronchitis it's it's full of minerals it's good for many many things actually that I had no idea um, and I think when I get back home I'm gonna go out and uh, find some hot springs that are in Georgia I heard that they have some really beautiful hot springs there that have the same sulfur water so I'll be looking forward to doing that so I'm drinking as much as I can while I'm here because um, I'm, I'm already kind of feeling the benefits um, just a lot of a lot of energy skins glowing just feeling really good so it's really funny the way we do this is um, kind of have to go around you gotta be careful with this the water so hot here. You have to be really careful because you can burn yourself. throughout the day. And um, now we're going to head over and get some breakfast. As you can see, it's really quiet here. It's really peaceful. Um, a lot of plant life and a lot of animals. other um, it's just it's just beautiful it's just a natural experience you know it's you're in the jungle for real like it is surrounded by jungle surrounded by plant life it's absolutely beautiful um, is that Taiwa hey Taiwa where are you going what you doing are you guys swimming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I can swim with you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was Taiwa. She is the princess of the village. <laughs> and she's so beautiful, so smart. She knows about her quinoa and her sea moss, okay? So it's just wonderful 
you, you really get to see how um, a baby raised on uh, electrical foods um, is developing. And she's just beautiful and smart. She takes thermal baths every day and um, eats all her fruits and vegetables and watermelon every morning. So this is this is something that Stavey said he really wants for all children. You know, I was telling him about the foods that. Um, black America is eating every morning for breakfast, you know, stopping at the gas station or a sausage, hey Pablo, right. sausage biscuit or, you know, uh, Doritos and soda before they go to school in the morning and, and how sad that is. And he just bowed his head. I mean, for a long time, he, he just couldn't believe it. And, you know, seeing his daughter every day eating these beautiful non hybrid electrical foods and experiencing the benefits of that is something that he wants for all children. So, uh, hopefully, not hopefully, we will make that happen. So this is the breakfast breakfast hall here and lunch. Um, we usually they serve around eight o'clock every day, and they stop at two, so no food after two o'clock. Today, which is fine, and I think there's some sea moss left over here. Oh, okay. I have to take this. <clears throat> so, here we are. Ooh, plums. Y'all yeah, love plums, I'm so excited about this right now. You know, your appetite's really different here, too. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's like you know, when I'm at home, the typical breakfast for me is um, aki, plantain, um, I love papaya, I love um, quinoa for breakfast, I love amaranth for breakfast, which are things that are just a little bit more feeling um, and really healthy um, by most standards, but um, here it's all fruit, all fruit. So um, today we have watermelons and some plum, apple, which is typical, some delicious looking, Thing I don't know what it is. Mm. 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 It's just nuts. It tastes like walnuts, almonds, and some maple syrup. Really good. Yeah, so every day it's papaya, um, sour oranges, a lot of cantaloupe, a lot of watermelon, and typically people will eat this around 8.30, and then they don't eat again until around noon and then no more food till after two. So they give you your herbs, and you're also doing um, sea moss. Um, and the sea moss is served warm here, which is really interesting because I always drink my sea moss um, cold, in like a smoothie or a shake or something like that, similar to how they make it in the Caribbean. But as you can see, this one is smoking hot. Ah, and that is not moss. That is something else. <laughs> so we'll have a sister come bring some sea moss out here and I can get my sea moss in this morning. But usually we'll keep a container about this big, take it to our rooms, you know, keep it with us and just drink on that and that's your nourishment throughout the rest of the evening. You're um, just digesting whatever you ate early. Usually the lunch is a little bigger and then the sea moss is gonna supply all that nutrition throughout the evening. So it's um, a really cleansing way to, um, to heal, you know, it's a way to clean your body and to heal while you're here. So along with your breakfast here every morning, you're also given your herbs to drink, which um, I strongly suggest um, on Chef Aki program, every day get your herbs in, you make your herbal infusions overnight and then drink them in the morning, which is exactly what they're doing here, which is wonderful. You're getting your fruit in the morning. Today I'm having some melons, some plums, and then you drink your herbs. So it's not, um, not a bad flavor. It's just an earthy flavor. Um, and this is the Maya, and it's um, one of Dr. Sadie's formulas that I've been drinking every day since I've been here twice a day. Um, and some people have different herbs that are set out for them based on what they're here to work on. They're here to heal or cleanse different things. They're taking different formulas. So all that's picked out for you as you arrive, you're able to assess, or someone's able to help you to assess 
um, what it is that you should be giving your body, how many times a day, and all that supplied to you through this whole program. Um, your food supplied to you twice a day, your herbs, your, um, your waters, all your, your juices, all the things that you need um, are supplied to you here twice a day. So it's really wonderful. So cheers to my health, my blood, and my brain. Lord knows I need it. Mm. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. And you can always chase it with fruit. <laughs> all right. So, hey, Evelyn. Hi. How are you? Fine. Morning. Okay. I am. Um, nice to meet you. I know. <laughs> nice to see you again. Yeah, to have come to take your pressure. Okay. To see how you're doing. Let's do it. Let's do it. And what, what, Evelyn, what's the importance of checking the blood pressure every day? Yeah, well, we, the important thing is that sometimes yeah, you will be, it, it be um, very low, or sometimes it could be very high. And then depending if it's high, we, how the medication to how to treat you. Mm -hmm. And if it gets it low, we mm -hmm. still got a medication too, to make it, you know, sometimes depend the medication to how to drink. I see. Okay. So now I know I've been pretty good since I've been here, right? Yeah. Not too low, not too high. Oh. Oh, it always makes me feel like I'm going to sleep when it's squeezing. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have already finished. Chef Aki is the it's very good since it's 100 away in. Okay. And the normal is it's supposed to be like 120 away in or mm -hmm. even 70, it's still good. Still so good. you have a good Not pressure. Good. 100 over 80. It's very good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Evelyn. Okay. Appreciate Same it. Same to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just had my blood pressure taken as we do. <laughs> um, had my blood pressure taken as we do here every morning at Usha Village. Um, 100 over 80, so I'm good. Strong as the knots. I'm good, and I think I'm gonna probably. <clears throat> it's around 9:45 here, which is getting later in the day for Usha Village. So that usually means it's time to hit the market and get some uh, some vegetables to make some grub for lunch. So I think we're gonna do that. So if you wanna follow me, let's go get some vegetables. leaving Usha village headed out to the market today so we can um, get some veggies to cook up some good lunch oh bye Tyra what are you doing you want anything from the market yeah what uh -oh. you want fruits mm -hmm. okay okay <laughs> see you later bye bye, -bye. <laughs> I want this, that, that, that. <laughs> oh man. So how big is this property, would you say? Man. Uh, a couple of acres. Yeah. Yeah, it's so beautiful coming far out this way because then you can see that whole mountain. It's gorgeous. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Villages and communities here, not far from Usha Village. 
not too far from La Ceva. And uh, we're going to go and kind of see what they have to offer. It's really awesome. It's, it's, it's so incredible to see all these small communities right in the middle of the jungle. I mean, they've just built all these communities right in the middle of the jungle. It's amazing. I prefer to do key limes, but these are really cute and small, so we'll get those today. I think they get the job done. They're kind of like key limes, huh? They're like medium sized limes. Some ginger. tamale instead of corn and like some spinach and
here in Honduras, I find it's really easy to get non-hybrid food is grown everywhere. I mean, it's it, it's everywhere. You actually don't see a lot of the, the crap food. They have a lot of fresh non-hybrid foods on, on all the food stands. And a lot of the, the more exotic foods that we don't get back home, they have them here. It's really interesting. I'm picking out these green beans, and usually at home they don't look like this. It's, it's, when, once I'm looking at a batch of green beans, even at the farmers market, it's like half the batch looks like shit, you know. But here, it's, it's they're all beautiful. Almost every every bean is just perfect. It's like storybook, recipe book style. It's just beautiful. Almost every bean, it's, it's just perfect. at a beautiful market here in uh, Jujutiapa and gracias. I just spent 55 lempiras on uh, probably 10 pounds of food and it cost me less than three American dollars. Non-hybrid food right here at the open air market. Amazing. So I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now. I'm going to see what else I can find. Bus. I gotta get my Spanish game up out here, but I'm learning, I'm learning pretty quickly. It seems to me like almost everyone here has a shop. That's a good idea if you're doing a lot of walking around here. <laughs> I should have came here before I went to the mall. See, I went to the mall and they got me. If you come to Honduras, stay your ass out the mall. Go out and meet the locals and get out in the community. It's the best deal. You're about to get hit in the street. Y'all heard I went missing in Honduras. <laughs> you know why? Uh, so I was shopping for vegetables in the middle of the damn street. <laughs> Only got avocado. much broccoli being served around the community. I wonder if that's a or else. Then, then uh broccoli like this is no good. Mm, you see yeah, like, I would, I would like never. when it's like when you soft. feel them you gotta you gotta make sure you and yeah. this is a no no. Yeah I don't that's I a, definitely don't listen to the that. Chinese broccoli is better than this. I love I love that Chinese, Chinese broccoli. The broccoli. Okay. You got the peas? She's like, uh, uh, <laughs> your sister? Uh -huh, I can tell. <laughs> nice. You look alike. You look like, you look like twins. You have the same thing. <laughs> Emela. Emela. That's twins. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gracias. Have a great day. <laughs> All right. Maybe one more thing.
able to get avocado, peppers, zucchini, cucumber, red onion, uh, green beans, all for less than five American dollars here in Honduras. So I may never come back home. <laughs> just now entering into what's called Sambo Creek, uh, which is really interesting. Not Sambo, but Sambo Creek. And uh, it's another village here that's known for, hola, that's known for um, uh, the Garifuna people, which I've learned about um, in my travel here, the Garifunas, which are the blacks of uh, Honduras. And these people were um, never slaves. So they actually, um, migrated here from uh, the Yoruba people of Africa. So it's a, a beautiful combination. As you're, you're here, you'll see the Garifuna people blended in with the local uh, Hond Honduranians. And uh, so I'm just now for the first time entering Sambo Creek. I'm gonna check it out and see what they have to offer today. I actually met a beautiful Garifuna sister at Sadie's lecture in Atlanta. She was there selling uh, some jewelry. Okay, you know the sister? Yeah, real beautiful sister. She just uh, sent me a message. And um, yeah, she's got family here and they've got some nice property out here. Um, oh, you're her family. Okay, yeah. So I'm here with the sister family, so I'm sure she'll be watching this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, hola. Interesting, all right. So I'm gonna see my brothers and sisters out here in Sambo Creek, and they, I know they get they do uh, drumming and mu a lot of music and stuff here too. So um, maybe on the weekend we'll come back and we'll get to see that too. To do a real good. over there, white sand, this is what it what? looks like. Okay, done. Yeah, I got to make my way. What's it called again? Cas Cochinos. Cas Cochinos. And this is what you're actually going to be in. Wow. It's beautiful. Have you been yet? No. You haven't been? Yo, get your wife. Let's go. Get your wife, man. Let's go. Let's go get your wife, yo. Let's go to Cas Cochinos. Yes. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. What's your name? Ali. Oh wow, Cascuccinos. So I 
think they're put no they're not bringing fish in they're bringing in wood or they're taking wood Hola. we won't get you on film i promise oh that must be their van <laughs> they're going to be filming survivors. Another country coming in to film survivors over there. But that's guys continues over there. These people like the Colombians and Mexicans are building stuff out there with this wood out there right now so they can film survivors. We got two countries that have been doing it for nine years now, which is Italy and Spain. And uh, Italy's out there doing it right now. And then this other country's going to start probably two weeks from now. They've been doing it for 10 years. What? I didn't know that show was that old. We never know where they were, right? We gotta find some, some water. I mean, some rice. We need uh, rice and milk. Rice and milk. people are here if you don't know Spanish I think that naturally you will feel maybe just a little bit of a disconnect I think it's really important to learn the language of the people to just get another sense of their culture and for them to get a sense of you I think it's really 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 important I think that you're a little limited not just in your um, verbal communication but in what you gain from the experience of a people's culture I think it's really important to learn their language. So um, one of my brothers told me today he learned a language 
you know, in just a couple years, he's fluent. So as an adult to still, you know, be able to learn new language, I think it's really important. And, and I'm going to do my best. I'm going to challenge myself to do just that. So I can continue to come back and, and connect. Hola. Wow. Oh, is that crab? Wow, that brother just came. Go. Crab right there, boy. I forgot his name. I his name. Oh, you know? <laughs> I know they see his camera and it's like, Yo. what the hell? Yo. Hola, <laughs> he done rolled up with the crab. Hola. It's, it's very slow around here today. Not a lot of people hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh my gosh! Huge king crab. Yeah. Is still alive? <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, it's open. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right. All right. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! No one who got football like. Yeah. 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 I would kick that ball. Let me see that. I don't know. I Oh, somebody went to go get it. What is this thing here? It's like the two sticks. Is that that's, where they hang from? That's the goal. That's the goal. Oh, that's the goal? Yeah, you see another oh, one right snap. there. Oh, so that's the goal. That's the goal. The crew in here, though. Yeah, they're not. They're not. Yeah, the crew in here. Let's get a live crew. Let's get a picture. Oh, yeah. man. I would love that. Because I'd be